Dear viewers, in today's sermon, titled The Great and Good Reversal, Bishop Dr. Caleb Moon will be preaching on three points for a great and good reversal to occur in our lives. I hope you will be blessed through today's sermon. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Ndugu zangu wapendwa katika Kristo Yesu, Last Sunday I shared a message titled Sufferings and Blessing. Kwenye Jumapili iliyopita nilishiriki nanyi ujumbe kuhusu mateso na baraka. I talked about the types of suffering shown in the Bible and shared my testimony of having gone through suffering. Na katika mahubiri hayo nilishiriki nanyi aina mbalimbali ya mateso iliyoandikwa kwenye Biblia na kisha nikashiriki nanyi ushuhuda wangu jinsi nilipitia mateso na magumu. And I told you that suffering is not always a bad thing if you handle it well and that it can turn into a blessing. Na kisha niliwambia kwamba mateso ama majaribio si kitu kibaya lakini ukize kuishughulikia na uipite vizuri itageuka kuwa baraka. Therefore I said that through sufferings we must be changed and be blessed so that we do not become believers like ravens but rather be believers like doves na ndio maana nikawaambia kwamba kupitia mateso na majaribio lazima tubadilike tugeuzwe tuwe wabarikiwa ndio kwamba tusiwe waumini kama kunguru lakini tuwe waumini kama njiwa today i will preach on the words of job chapter 20 verse 20 to 9 29 under the title the great and good reversal leo hii nitahubiri kutokana na andiko la leo ambalo ni ayubu 20 mstari wa 20 mpaka 29 na mada ya leo ni urejesho mkuu na mzuri the term reversal refers to a major change in the situation of events tukasema kuhusu neno urejesho inarejelea mabadiliko makubwa katika msururu au hali ya matukio mbalimbali its dictionary meaning is a shift or turn around or a change in direction na maana yake ya urejesho katika kamusi maana yake ni mabadiliko ama mageuzi au mabadiliko ya mwelekeo the good god causes a great and good reversal in the life of those who under any circumstances look only to the lord pursue and achieve perfect goodness in their hearts and overcome evil with the god mungu ambaye ni mwema husababisha urejesho mkuu na urejesho mzuri kwa maisha ya wale watu ambao katika hali yoyote wanamtazamia tu bwana na kutafuta kutimiza wema mkamilifu ndani ya mioyo yao na wanashinda uovu kwa wema the fact that peter who was just a fisherman catching fish in the sea of galilee met jesus repented changed and became the lord's greatest disciple was a great and good reversal in peter's life tukachukua mfano wa petro Petro ambaye alikuwa mvuvi wa kuvua tu samaki kwenye bahari ya Galilaya maisha yake baada ya kupatana na Yesu na kutubu na kubadilika akafanyika kuwa mwanafunzi mkuu wa Yesu hiyo pekee ni urejesho mkuu urejesho mzuri katika maisha ya Petro Mary Magdalene who lived a poor life and without hope due to sicknesses was healed and changed after meeting Jesus and became the first rank woman in the kingdom of heaven. Angalia mfano mwingine Maria Magdalene ambaye aliishi maisha ya umaskini na maisha bila tumaini kwa sababu ya ugonjwa mwingi lakini aliponywa na akabadilika baada ya kupatana na Yesu na mwisho akafanyika mwanamke mwenye cheo cha juu zaidi ya wanawake wote katika ufalme wa mbinguni. This too is an amazing great and good reversal nayo pia ni urejesho mkuu urejesho mzuri wa kuajabisha consider job the main character of the book of job whom were whom we listen about on someone's every week 
na hebu sasa fikiria kuhusu Ayubu Ayubu ambaye tunamzungumzia sana kwenye kitabu cha Ayubu na tunamsikiliza ama tunasikiliza kumuhusu kwenye mahubiri ya kila wiki Although he suffered greatly he eventually lived the life of a good reversal Ukaangalia maisha yake hata kama aliteseka pakubwa sana lakini hatimaye aliishi maisha ya urejesho mzuri The words of today's scripture what Jefa sefta jo na maneno kwenye somo la leo ni maneno ambayo Zofari alimwambia Ayubu In summary the contents of the words are as follows Na nika uh, weka kwa ufupi ama kwa maneno mengine maneno ambayo Zofari alimwambia Ayubu ni kama hivi Job has no peace no joy Ya kwamba Ayubu hana amani hana furaha Happiness does not last long and misfortune comes. Furaha yake haijadumu na bahati mbaya imekuja. Great fear is coming and darkness awaits him. Woga mkubwa umekuja na gize na mgojea. His family and property have departed and now he receives God's wrath. Amepoteza family yake na mali yake na sasa anaipokea ghadhabu ya Mungu. When you hear this was of Jofa it seems Job's life is completely miserable and unfortunate. Ukasikia maneno haya ya Zofari inakaa kana kwamba maisha ya Ayubu ni yenye huzuni na bahati mbaya kabisa. But this is not true of Job. Lakini huu si ukweli kuhusu Ayubu. Of course when Job passed through the heart of suffering It may have looked like this in Jofa's eyes. Na bila shaka kwa sababu Ayubu alipitia moyo wa kuteseka kwa macho ya Zofari inawezaonekana kana kwamba jambo ambalo anasema ni kweli. However, after going through hardships and sufferings, Job's life completely changed. Hata hivyo, baada ya kupitia magumu na mateso, maisha ya Ayubu yalibadilika kabisa. He achieved goodness in his heart, gained a spiritual faith and became a person who received the double blessings. Hatimaye Ayubu alitimiza wema ndani ya moyo wake, akapata imani ya kiroho na akafanyika mtu ambaye alipokea baraka maradufu. This is a chapter great at great reversal and great reversal of faith. Na huu ndio urejesho mkuu na mzuri wa Ayubu, urejesho wa imani. I sincerely hope that all of you who attended today's worship service will become believers who achieve great and good reversal like Job. Basi natumai kwa ukweli wa moyo wangu ya kwamba kila mmoja wenu ambao mnashiriki baada hii mtafanyika waumini ambao watatimiza urejesho mzuri urejesho mkuu kama vile Ayubu. From now based on the words of today's scripture let me tell you three important spiritual lessons that can bring about a great and good reversal. Na kuanzia sasa kulingana na maneno ya andiko la leo hebu niweleze mafundisho ya kiroho matatu ambayo yatakusaidia utimize urejesho mkuu na urejesho mzuri. Firstly If we know the spiritual laws of us and make good use of the spiritual power contained in the words a great and good reversal will occur in our lives. Jambo la kwanza ukaweza kujua sheria ya kiroho ya maneno na uitumikie vizuri nguvu ya kiroho iliyoko ndani ya maneno pale ndipo utatimiza urejesho mkuu na mzuri katika maisha yenu Secondly if we know the importance of where we belong and belong to God a great and good reversal will occur in your lives Ya pili ndio kwamba ushuhudie urejesho mkuu na mzuri katika maisha yako yafaa ujue umuhimu wa kujua uko wapi uko chini ya nani na kisha ujiweke chini ya Mungu utashuhudia urejesho mkuu na mzuri Thirdly as we gradually expand the portion we have received from God 
a great and good reversal will occur in our lives. Ya tatu ndio kwamba upate urejesho mkuu na urejesho mzuri katika maisha yako basi inabidi hatua kwa hatua upanue sehemu ama mgao ambao ulipokea kwa Mungu. In today's scripture, Jephthah's words to Job implies that he doesn't properly understand the situation Job is in, and he speaks carelessly and with evil as he pleases, thus making Job more suffering and difficult. Katika somo la leo maneno ya Zofar kuelekea Ayubu inatuonyesha ya kwamba yeye Zofari haelewi vizuri hali ambayo Ayubu ako na ndio maana anaongea tu ovyo ovyo na uovu vile atakavyo na kwa kufanya vile inamfanya Ayubu ateseke zaidi na ahisi ugumu zaidi Later in Job chapter 42 verse 7 God becomes angry with Job's friends including Jopha who spoke evil of Job through their words and arguments and spoke words that were close to causing Job baadaye kwenye kitabu cha Ayubu kikiisha kwenye Ayubu 42 mstari wa saba, Mungu anakasirika dhidi ya marafiki wa Ayubu ikiwemo Zofar marafiki ambao walinena uovu dhidi ya Ayubu kwa kutumia maneno na mabishano makali kana kwamba wanamlaani Ayubu God gave a lesson about us in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 2. Na Mungu ametupa funzo kuhusu maneno kwenye Mithali 13 mstari wa pili. It says from the fruit of their lips people enjoy good things but the unfaithful have an appetite for violence kutoka tunda la midomo yake mtu hufurahia mambo mema bali wasio waaminifu wanatamani sana ujeuri we must speak gracious and positive words imetupasa tunene maneno mazuri yenye neema maneno ya kutia moyo if you speak negative or cursing words you will be subject to violence na ukawa mtu wa kuongea maneno yasiyofaa maneno ya kulaani watu basi hautajiepusha na uhasama na vurugu we need to check what was we are using basi metupasa tuchunguze kila wakati tunatumia maneno aina gani the words we use contain the power of creation na ukajua maneno ambayo unatumia yana nguvu za uumbaji and words contain spiritual laws na maneno yote yamebeba sheria za kiroho in the bible we find a story about jacob in genesis chapter 25 kwenye biblia tunapata hadithi kuhusu yakobo kwenye kitabu cha mwanzo sura ya 25 jacob was a twin brother but did not have the birth right because he was born as the younger brother Yakobo alikuwa ndugu pacha lakini hakuwa na haki ya mzaliwa wa kwanza kwa sababu yeye ndiye alizaliwa wa mwisho kama ndugu mdogo. Upon realizing that words have the power of creation, Jacob took advantage of the spiritual laws contained in words to steal the birthright from his elder brother Esau. Na Yakobo baada ya kutambua ya kwamba ndani ya maneno kuna nguvu za uumbaji alichukua fursa hiyo nafasi hiyo akaitumia kutumia sheria za kiroho ndani ya maneno kuiba haki ya mzaliwa wa kwanza kutoka kwa ndugu yake mkubwa Iso. One day Esau who enjoyed going out to the field and hunting uh, returned home tired basi kawa siku moja Eso ambaye alikuwa anafurahia kwenda nje msituni na kufanya uwindaji akarudi nyumbani kama amechoka sana At the time Jacob was cooking some stew and a delicious smell spread throughout the house Na wakati huo Yakobo alikuwa na andaa kitoweo ama mchuzi na harufu nzuri ilikuwa imeenea kwenye nyumba yote Esau was very hungry that he could not overcome his hunger and Esau ended up selling his birthright to Jacob for a bowl of stew. Na Esau 
alikuwa na njaa kubwa sana kiasi ya kwamba hangevumilia njaa yake na ukafuata hadithi mpaka mwisho 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 aliuza haki yake ya mzaliwa wa kwanza kwa Yakobo kwa sababu ya bakuli ya mchuzi if we look at the transaction process of Esau and Jacob selling and buying the birthright to each other we can realize the spiritual law contained in the words okeza kuchunguza jinsi hawa wawili walifanya biashara biashara ya kuuza na kununua haki ya mzaliwa wa kwanza utiza kutambua kuna sheria ya kiroho ambayo iko ndani ya maneno ambayo tunatumia in genesis chapter 25 verse 32 as says look i am about to die What good is the birthright to me? Kwenye kitabu cha Mwanzo 25 mstari wa 32 Yesu anasema, "Tazama, mimi niko karibu kufa. Itanifaa nini haki ya mzaliwa wa kwanza?" In verse 33 it is recorded that Jacob asked the Esau to swear and Esau swore and sold his Birthright. Na ukaangalia mstari wa 33 imenakiliwa ya kwamba Yakobo alimuuliza Esau afanye kiapo naye Esau akafanya kiapo na kauza haki yake ya mzaliwa wa kwanza. Esau and Jacob bought and sold the birthright simply by speaking to each other. Na basi ukaangalia Esau na Yakobo waliuza na kununua haki ya mzaliwa wa kwanza kwa maneno tu kwa kuongea tu. There was no written agreement, no certificates given, no receipts exchanged at all. Na ukaangalia hakukuwa na mkataba wowote ulioandikwa kati yao wawili, hakukuwa na cheti chochote ambacho kilipeanwa, wana kukubadilishwa receipt yoyote hata. Nevertheless, the contract was established. Hata hivyo bado mkataba ulifanyika. In the physical world when making a transaction a contract must be written stamped signed and received in order for the contract to be established and take legal effect. Kwenye ulimwengu wa kimwili huko duniani wakati tunafanya biashara lazima kuwe na mkataba na ndio kwamba mkataba ufanyike na uweze kwanza kazi yake inabidi mkataba uandikwe kwa maandishi utiwe muhuri utiwe sahihi na ipokelewe ndio uanze kazi however in the spiritual world contract are established through words lakini kinyume na hiyo kwenye ulimwengu wa kiroho mikataba inatengenezwa na inafanyika kupitia maneno This is the spiritual law contained in words. Na hiyo ndio sheria ya kiroho iliyoko ndani ya maneno. With who to make contract in the spiritual world? Na nikauliza swali, tunafanya mikataba na nani katika ulimwengu wa kiroho? We make a contract with God who listen to what he say and we also make a contract with our enemy the devil. Tunapoongea tunafanya mikataba na Mungu wetu ambaye anasikiliza kila kitu ambacho tunasema na tena tunafanya mikataba na adui yetu ibilisi because as was ignorant of the spiritual love of the words he degraded his birth of right and said that he would swear easily and sell it easily kwa sababu hizo hakujua Sheria ya kiroho ndani ya maneno alipuuza haki yake ya mzaliwa wa kwanza na akasema tu kwa uraisi ya kwamba atafanya kiapo kwa uraisi na atauza haki hiyo kwa uraisi. But Jacob knew spiritual law very well. Lakini Yakobo alijua vizuri sana sheria ya kiroho hizi. Esha admitted with his lips that he would sell his birthright and so Jacob paid with all power over still in return for the birthright so spiritually the contract was made 
na kwa sababu Yakobo alijua vizuri na alishasikia Iso akitamka kwa mdomo wake ya kwamba angeuza haki yake ya mzaliwa wa kwanza basi Yakobo akaamua kuilipa kwa bakuli ya mchuzi ndio kwamba apate hiyo haki ya mzaliwa wa kwanza na kwa hivyo kwa jinsi kama hiyo kiroho mkataba ulifanyika Regarding the spiritual love was the Bible says in the following verses. Na kuhusiana na sheria ya kiroho ya maneno Biblia imetuelezea kwenye mistari ifuatayo. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 3 The one who guards his mouth preserves his life. The one who rashly opens wide his lips comes to ruin. Kwa mfano mitali 13 mstari wa 3 inatuambia yeye alindaye kinywa chake huilinda nafsi yake bali afunuae mdomo wake ovyo ovyo atapata uharibifu Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit Nayo mithali 18 mstari wa 21 inatuambia Mauti na uzima huwa katika uwezo wa ulimi na wao wa upenda ulimi watakula matunda yake. If we utilize the spiritual laws of what we are, a great and good reversal will occur in us too. Ukatumikisha sheria za kiro ya maneno vizuri basi katika maisha yako pia kutakuwa na urejesho mkuu, urejesho mzuri. Job said this in Job chapter 42. Na kuhusiana na hili Ayuba amelitaja kwenye kitabu cha Ayubu sura ya 42. I know that you can do all things and then no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Anataja pale ninajua ya kuwa unaweza kufanya mambo yote wala hakuna mpango wako unaoweza kuzuilika. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear but now my eye sees you masikio yangu yalikuwa yamesikia habari zako lakini sasa macho yangu yamekuona therefore i retract and i repent in dust and ashes kwa hiyo najidharau mwenyewe na kutubu katika mavumbi na majivu because he confessed the like i believe in god with whom Nothing is impossible and I have a faith as sure as seeing God with my own eyes. So please bless me according to spiritual laws. He was blessed with a double blessing and a long life. Ayubu akisema hivi kwa maneno mengine nasema hivi na muamini Mungu ambaye kwake hakuna kitu ambacho hakiwezekani na niko na imani ya hakika kana kwamba nimemwona kwa macho yangu moja kwa moja kwa hivyo na kuomba Mungu unibariki kwa sababu alisema hivyo akatamka hivyo basi kulingana na sheria za kiroho aliza kubarikiwa baraka maradufu na kaishi maisha marefu zaidi during times of suffering Job often complained God does not take care of him and that God does not listen to my prayers. Tukarudi nyuma wakati ambapo Ayuba alikuwa bado anateseka, alikuwa na kawaida ya kunungunika akisema Mungu hanijali, Mungu hajibu mombi yangu. 